Let's look at the church in Pagamos. Revelation 2.12. And the angel of the church in Pagamos write, This thing saith he which had the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful Mattia, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee. Because thou hast dear them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. Who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel. To eat things, sacrifice unto idols, and to commit fornication. So has thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Which thing I hate. Repent. Or else I will come unto thee quickly. And will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear. Let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh. Will I give to eat of the hidden manna. And will give him a white stone. And in the stone a new name written. Which no man knoweth. Saving he that receiveth it. Alright. So this is the church in Pagamos. First of all words of commendation. Their faithfulness, all right, in defending the faith, they have not given up the faith, holding fast his name. Even when one of them was killed, they took one of them in the church by persecution and killed him. It didn't deter them from following and from defending and from proclaiming with a loud voice the message. In spite of what they were going through. And God says, I know your works. I have seen your steadfastness. I have seen how much you have survived in the midst of tribulation. I have seen that where you are is Satan's seat. But you have not denied the faith. In spite of trials. In the midst of so much persecution. You have withstood your ground. That's how it started. However, verse 14. He has a few things against them. All right. Now that phrase against is from the Greek word kata, K-A-T-A. It implies I have a few things contrary to you. I have observed a few things that are contrary to you. In other words, he spotted a defect that does not belong to the church. Something strange was going on in that congregation. A defect. What were the strange things? Verse 14. It is the doctrine of Balaam. Number one. And we shall examine what is the doctrine of Balaam. Number two. The doctrine of the Nicolaitans. In verse 15. The word doctrine in the above text is translated from the Greek word didache. D-I-D-A-C-H-E. Which implies what has been taught or what has been instructed. So there was a teaching and there was an instruction going on in this church in Pagamos. So the issue he had was concerning doctrine. They had a doctrinal issue. Uh, and if you observe, the same thing with the church at Ephesus. The doctrine of the Nicolaitans. The teaching. So the problem God had with the church at Ephesus and the church at Pagamos were doctrinal issues. Doctrinal issues. The doctrine of Balaam and the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. And we're going to examine what are these doctrines. Because when we examine, you find out that these doctrines are running all over the place wild. In so many so-called churches. And God says, I hate it. So what is this doctrine? The doctrine of Balaam and the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. So this rebuke was concerning false teaching in the local church. Which they were supposed to repent from. A false teacher is known by what he says. A false teacher is known by what he says. A false teacher. While a good local church is known by the quality of what is taught. A good local church is known by the quality of what is taught. A good local church is built on teaching. Not drama. Not razzmatazz. Not activity. 
a good local church is known by the quality of diet served by the quality of food that is taught or communicated to believers that's how you know a good church and a false teacher is known by what he says a false teacher is a man that twists the scriptures and make the scriptures say what the scriptures are not saying that's a false teacher when somebody stands up and say if you don't pay your tight you will go to hell full stop that is a false teacher that is a false teacher because it is not consistent with the doctrine of scripture in fact it is not even in the old testament even the old testament where he's bringing it from there is no attachment to tithing that guarantees eternal life from genesis it has been the lamb of god that will take away sin from genesis it has always been the lamb of god because even in eden there was the tree of life which was christ so all through the scripture it has always been that eternal life will be in a person not in an activity so when a teacher of the word say if you don't pay your tithe you will go to hell it's a false teacher false teachers are known by what they say not what they wear and not miracles signs and wonders because watch 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 anybody can do miracles miracles are not exclusive to christianity they are not exclusive to us i'm not saying we don't do miracles i believe in miracles okay i've come across people all over the place even right here in this church who have had miracles in services without anybody making a big deal about it we don't advertise miracles because we are not showmen we amplify the world because that is our assignment we don't have time to be advertising miracles oh this brother could not work well after we prayed he has started working well no miracles are a lifestyle for a believer once we show you who you are you walk in the miraculous so it's not supposed to be a special feature no it's not supposed to be a special feature in the church of course it can be a special feature in the crusade ground because in the crusade ground we want to show them the goodness of god but within the local church miracles are not supposed to be a big deal they are supposed to be part of our lives as believers because a believer is a supernatural person and in the supernatural miracles are natural you didn't hear what i said a believer is a supernatural person and in the supernatural miracles are natural they are not a special event they are part of our lifestyle first of all even your birth is a miracle even your birth born again is a miracle so you began from miracle you continue in miracles you end in miracles so a good local church is known by teaching the quality of teaching that goes on there the quality of teaching and let me be honest with you when you encounter good bible teaching the moment you encounter good bible teaching it is difficult for you to settle for junk very difficult very difficult in fact impossible i come across people who are not in this physical congregation who just follow me on youtube facebook and all that and they say papa we can't go to church again because when we sit down what they are saying is no more registering and the good thing about this is once you hear the right word and because you are born of god there's a witness that tells you this is what you should be hearing and once that witness registers that this is where you belong you have been shown your level anything below that is like eating with pigs the prodigal son say why am i eating with pigs let me go back to my father's house so the moment you hear the right word there's a witness and once that witness witnesses it will be difficult for you to settle for less very difficult after all church is not a location church is a person you are the church you are the church when you live here the church has left when we gather on wednesday the church has assembled you are the church of the living god i, I don't know if you're hearing what i'm saying see this is not the church you are the church your body is the temple and i will build my upon a rock and the gates of hell so you have been built a spiritual house 
The devil cannot prevail against you. Why? You are a product of resurrection. When Jesus rose, you rose. What could not defeat him cannot defeat you. So when we gather, the church has come together. When we part, the church has gone their separate ways. But every one of you is the church of God. You are the temple. You are God's tabernacle. You are God's tabernacle. Just like it was in the Old Testament. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? You are also spirit, soul, and body. Outer court, inner court, holy of holies. You are the tabernacle of God. And what God has done in Christ has been completed in you. But your mind needs to acknowledge it. And then there's one more thing. The redemption of your body. Which makes you a complete tabernacle of God. Perfected in the finished work. So don't let anybody tell you a church is somewhere. You are the church. You are God's tabernacle. You are the new Jerusalem. You are the holy city. You are the bride of Christ. Oh glory to God. Somebody is not excited here this morning. So let's get to work. Let's get to work. A good local church is known by the quality of what is taught. We examine the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. And we say that doctrine of the Nicolaitans is a doctrine that emphasizes a pseudo gospel. Okay? And I will open it up in a second. But let's look quickly at the doctrine of Balaam. What is the doctrine of Balaam? Revelation 2.14 But I have a few things against thee because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. Who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. It is critical to understand what was said and not to imagine or read a meaning into it. So let's do some exegesis. The word stumbling block the Greek word for stumbling block is the word scandalon, which implies a snare or a trap. The issue here is Balaam taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel. Historically, he did it by them eating food offered to idols and committing fornication. Let's go back to where it came from historically. Numbers 25, 1 to 3. And Israel abode in Shittim. And the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. And the people did eat and bow down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Baal poor. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. This was what was referred to historically as the council of Balaam. Look at Numbers 31, 16. Behold, this caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of poor. And there was a plague among the congregation of the people. Peter also spoke about the way of Balaam. 2 Peter 2, 14 to 15. Having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls. And heart they have exercised with covetous practices, coarse children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Notice his words beguiling unstable souls and heart they have exercised with covetous practices. A heart. They have exercised with covetous practices. Jude also talked about Balaam. Jude 1 11. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Kor. Notice his words ran greedily after the error of Balaam. For a reward. Reward emphasized. For a reward. So the doctrine of Balaam. Is a teaching in the local church. The doctrine of Balaam. Is a teaching in the local church. Alright. This teaching. That we call the doctrine of Balaam. Is a teaching. That inspires believers. Into covetousness and greed. The doctrine of Balaam. Which will eventually beguile them and cause them to be unstable. 
a teaching that inspires believers into covetousness and greed. I will make it. I will make it. I will make it. I will be the richest man on it. I will be the richest man on it. I will make it. Greed, covetousness. Greed, covetousness. Messages that are materialistic. How to make it. Entrepreneur skills in the church. Ten steps to success. Messages that make you feel that if you don't have financial breakthrough, God is not happy with you. Messages that make you feel that the approval of God is that you joined this church just one month ago. Now you have a jeep. Messages that inspire greed and covetousness. That's the doctrine of Balaam. And it's in many churches. Many Christians cannot come to church except it's a breakthrough service. Greed, covetousness. Messages that make you feel that you're not a success if you're not driving a Toyota Camry. Messages that make you feel that you are not with God if you don't buy a car, build a house before the year is over. So, Father, I will not let you go till you bless me. Those messages, they inspire greed. They make believers steal in their offices. They make believers get involved with fraudulent things so that they too can belong to the camp of those that testify that God is in them. It's a doctrine. It's a teaching. It is called the doctrine of Balaam. The doctrine of Balaam. And God said, I hate it. And he said to that church in Pagamos, this kind of teachings are going on in your congregation. Can you imagine a particular church every Sunday is entrepreneurial service. Every Sunday there is entrepreneurial service. Is that the mission of the church? And somebody said, God has told me to raise millionaires. Which verse? Which verse from, except it's a Bible I have not read. I have not seen any verse in the Bible that say we should raise millionaires. But I have seen a verse that say we should equip believers to do the work of ministry. We are not here to raise millionaires. We are here to raise believers. We are here to raise an army for God. That will preach the gospel of Christ. An army that will preach the message of salvation. Because the gospel is the power of God. Unto salvation. We are not here to raise millionaires. We are not here to raise millionaires. We are here to raise people. That are Christ like. People that are reflecting Christ. I've never seen a verse that says we should raise millionaires. It's not in the Bible. And it is not what the apostles handed over to us. No. It's not historical Christianity. And it's not apostolic teaching. The raising of millionaires. Don't you want you to be millionaires? You should be millionaires. Because if you have money, we can do more. But that's not our teaching in this church. But when a church focuses on materialistic gospel, it's the doctrine of Balaam. And believers are taught to give money. And that when they give money, they will prosper. It's fraud. Fraud of the highest order. Give so you can be rich. It's fraud. They are stealing from you. They are stealing from you. There is no such promise in the scripture. If you want to make money, get a job. Get a business. Money increases when you service society. God does not multiply money. The day God starts multiplying money, he has become a criminal. Nigeria has an institution that manufactures money. It is called Central Bank and it is regulated. And God is not a staff of Central Bank. God is not a staff of Central Bank. So God does not interfere with the production of money. Is he jobless? That's why it is men that give to you. 
God doesn't give to you money. God gives you ideas and wisdom. Which has already given you. Now it is left for you to translate the ideas and wisdom into profitability. Question, question, question. Did God create the earth? Who made the chair you're sitting on? Is it God? And the man that made it, did we pay? Why did we pay him? For the chair. But how did he get the chair? From the raw material that God has kept on earth, which anybody can access and use it to serve his society. So instead of sitting down in a church and allowing a pastor feed your greed and covetousness, my brother, hear the gospel, go out, look for something to do with your hand. Any preacher who say, give me money, God will multiply it. He's a thief. Did you hear what I said? What is he? He's a thief. Quote me anywhere. Quote me anywhere. It's fraud. God doesn't multiply money. Did you hear that? If God multiplies money, let me tell you the truth. I will lock the doors and keep all of you here. Whatever you have in your pocket, we will drop it. And nobody will go out for one year. Let God multiply that money so that the day we open the windows and doors and we go out, we are coming out billionaires. If that does not happen, then God does not multiply money. He that does not walk should not eat. So if you want to eat, walk. So if you want money, walk. It is a fast. You get a job. Clean your head. Don't let the doctrine of Balaam destroy your future. God doesn't multiply money. Say so if you go to a program somewhere, those of you that like moving around, If you go to a program somewhere and the man of God do 45 million years. 45 million years. Yeah, I see. I see. I see. I see. He's a thief. He's seen fraud. I see. I see. All right. There are 45 of you here. If you sow 100,000, you become a millionaire. Start coming out. God doesn't multiply money. And somebody says, but does God do miracles? Yes. But you two ask me, what kind of miracles? Miracles of giving you a favor with somebody who got money, who will give you? God won't produce the money. Uh -uh. Look at, the, don't you read your Bible? 5,000 hungry men in the bush. Why didn't Jesus do? Bragada and bread will fall out. Why didn't Jesus do that? He said, what do you have? They say bread and fish. He say bring it. And it happened only once. It wasn't a lifestyle. Open your hands. Say my hands will do something. My hands will do something. So, I so I can make money. The doctrine of Balaam feeds the greed and the covetousness of believers. Then it beguiles you and makes you unstable. Honey, you know how it makes you unstable? When now you give the money and you're waiting and the money does not multiply, then you start wondering, God, are you really there? This thing I'm hearing, is it true? You have become unstable. It has made you unstable. It has beguiled you. Especially when the preacher promised you and swore until tears were coming out of his eye. And he collected the money. And you yourself, because you are a mumushious, when you saw tears, you believe that no matter what, this thing is going to work. Touch your neighbor say, beware of the doctrine of Balaam. Some of them, you see them on television. Every time they preach on television, breakthrough, prosperity, prosperity, breakthrough. You will never hear Christ. You will never hear the believer's authority. It's always money, breakthrough. Four keys to uncommon money. 14 keys to uncommon wealth. Speed to overtake your overtakers. Uncommon sacrifice for uncommon level. See thief. You will never hear about Christ. You will never hear about eternal life. Meanwhile, what the believer has is richer than anything. We are the riches of Christ. We are the riches of Christ. 
which is beyond anything this world can produce. The doctrine of Balaam. The doctrine of Balaam. A preacher will come to a service, he will say, I came to make 14 people millionaires. So the whole program that all of us have been invited to attend is only 14 people you are going to make millionaires. So let us go now. Let the 14 stay there. Because that means we are not a part of that program. They are working on your psychology. Meanwhile, the gospel is for everybody. But the doctrine of Balaam. And God said, I hate it. God said, in fact, Pagamos, I have something against you. You have allowed that doctrine to be peddled in your congregation. You have allowed these false teachers to bring a pseudo message that looks like a message. Listen, the gospel is not welfare. The gospel is not welfare. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The doctrine of Balaam. Greed. Covetous. The doctrine of Balaam is the materialistic gospel. The materialistic gospel. A preacher in America said, God said that they should raise money to buy jet. They should raise money to buy jet. Are you hearing? Okay. That all of us should contribute for them to buy jet. That because they cannot fly with commercial airline. That because there are too many demons in commercial airline. And that if they fly in commercial airline, it will stop them hearing from God. So they need a private jet which will be a sanctuary. So that when they are inside the private jet, they will hear clearly. Then we that will give them the money, it is we that will stay with the demons. You are not hearing what I am saying. We that will contribute to give them the money. We can stay with demons in commercial airline. But they that are supposed to be the anointed, they cannot survive demons. But we can survive demons. So who should give who money? They should give us money. See their head. The materialistic gospel, very destructive. Very, very destructive. When your focus is money, 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 nothing money, that's when a brother will cheat a brother. And he will look at him and say, if you try, I will bind you in the spirit. He has cheated you and is opening eye for you. Materialistic gospel. All believers are after is money, 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 money. Money. And because of that, believers are full of sorrow. Sorrow all over the church. No wonder when they preach that their materialistic gospel and target you and you focus on money and you're sorrowful, they bring comedians to help you. They bring comedians Sunday morning. They bring comedians to come and entertain the goats. Since you're sorrowful, let's use comedians to cheer you up. Then after that, we give you the same dosage. You go out, you're frustrated. You come back depressed. How can a believer be depressed? Where is the joy of salvation? This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it the world can take it away. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it, the world can take it away. Money, no money, I have joy. It is, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. All that I have has never yet been told. I have a joy, the joy of salvation. I have a joy, the joy of salvation. The joy, joy every day. Joy, joy, joy every day. Happy, 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 happy every day. Joy, joy, joy every day. The joy of salvation. Joy every day. Rejoice not. 
that the demons are subject to you but rejoice that your names are written in the book of life shout glory of my life you are you mean more than this world to me I wouldn't trade you for silver no gold wouldn't trade you I wouldn't trade you for riches untold you you are my everything. 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 Renango zoto le de ge ge ge. Yano ka me yano ga. Shemuna gereto sakaya. Somebody shall glory. The doctrine of Balaam has no place in this church. Never. No place. We have zero tolerance for the doctrine of Balaam. See, I hear you. Our focus is on a person. What's his name? When the teaching is on material things, greed is fertilized. Covetousness. See, you are depressed because your focus has been diverted from where it should be to where it shouldn't be. Suddenly you feel that God never tried. Suddenly you feel like, God, are you even there? Of what benefit is serving you? Suddenly you are frustrated. Why? You have left the mirror. You are looking at the wrong place. Comparing themselves with themselves. That message, that's what it produces. Produces competition, greed, carnality. When all of us are seeing Christ, we are equal before Christ. All of us are equal before Christ. But once it is not Christ, we are not equal. Our equality is in Christ. Outside Christ, there's no equality. Materialistic gospel, it breeds covetousness, greed. And eventually, it beguiles believers from the truth of God's word. Paul warned very strongly against this kind of gospel, the doctrine of Balaam. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 3. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to hold some words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to to godliness the doctrine must be according to godliness and the doctrine must come from the wholesome words of jesus christ next verse he is proud anybody that ignores the doctrine of christ he is proud knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of words whereof cometh envy strife railings evil surmisings perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is what? Godliness. When your Christianity is measured by material things, what you are saying is that gain is godliness. That means you are not godly until you have a car, house, money. Otherwise, God is not with you. And in most of those churches, Every Sunday, there must be three people. Hey, since I came to this church, if you know what the Lord has done for me, I have married a wife, material. I have just bought a car, material. I have just been employed. God indeed is in this place. You see you, when you measure God's presence by things, it's an insult. Because there are people who don't know God, they have three wives. 
they have five cars and they have built mansions so God must be with them your own is one wife the man has three go one wife and you're making noise the man has three and he's surviving with three of them funding all of them and there's no quarrel in the house you have one and you're disturbing us papa you say we should marry three try now <laughs> can a man carry fire in his bosom and not be burnt only one wife you're sweating is it two and then three our testimony should not be material things you should come out and say praise the lord there is a scripture i've been working on finally this morning as i was reading it came alive oh, hey, those are testimonies your testimony should be things that are not tangible things that are not corruptible eternal things you know that should be our testimony when we gather as saints we should tabernacle around what christ has done any preacher that focuses you on material things outside Christ. Run! I don't care how long he's been preaching. Flee for your life. Once a church is about money, things, clothes, the message, the songs, everything is around material things. Run! You are sitting where Satan sits. Run! Don't even try to stay for a second. When you go to such churches where people celebrate things, brethren that have been there for years without a testimony, they get depressed. I've been in this church. Tight, I pay without mistake. I even used to add two naira on top in case I didn't count well. Yet nothing has changed. This one just came. And God has given him a car. God, is my name in the book of life or in the book of death? They have destabilized you in Christ because the focus is wrong. He said, I know you are poor, but you are rich. I know you are poor physically, but in the things of Christ, you are rich. If these material things are really what God is talking about, why don't we go with them to heaven? The day you are going to die, you carry all your car, carry all your money, put them inside your pocket. Say, okay, as you are burying me now, me and them will disappear. Next verse. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain we can carry nothing. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Once you can see food to eat and cloth to wear. Whether it is designer or not designer. As long as it is cloth that will cover you. And you have food to eat. is enough for joy. It's you that is killing yourself. By comparing yourself with your classmates. Yeah. Ogale graduated just the same year with me. Ogale is the MD of a bank now. I am still the MD of an empty house. I passed by Chibuzo's house. He has married. He has two children now. And that's for women. My age mates are married. Me too, I must marry. You go and marry Satan's junior brother. The day you arrive, one eye has grown big. Because you have to marry. Who told you you must marry? Who told you? Paul didn't marry. And he said a crown is laid up in heaven. Who told you you are growing old? Who is talking to you? Who are you listening to? Look at yourself in Christ. Don't be desperate for marriage. Don't be. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait patiently. And while you are waiting, get busy with soul winning. Get busy with impact. When you are busy, you won't remember time. It's idleness that make you count your age. Who said you will marry at 25? Who said so? Who said so? Where is it in the Bible? There are people who got married at 50 and they have joy. There are people that married at 23 and they have divorced three times. Wait. Don't let African mentality destroy your covenant sense. I was telling mama yesterday that I even saw a place in the Bible where a lady is free to approach a man. Why are you looking at me? If you like a brother, walk to him and say, I want to marry you. She shall be wasting time. <laughs>
You can approach a man. Come, brother. It's like you are not seeing. Look again. God is a good God. I think we can make a home together. Receive your sight. <laughs> Glory! Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has set you free and be not entangled again. Taste not, touch not, do not. Be not entangled with those things. Do not be entangled with those things. There are some brothers until a sister look at them and breathe on them. <laughs> Receive your sight. They will not marry till they die. There are things you shouldn't worry yourself about. Touch your neighbor say, don't worry yourself about material things. Set your gaze on Christ. You will be sorry you worry at all tomorrow morning. Cheer up you saints of God. There's nothing to worry about. Nothing to make you feel afraid. Nothing to make you doubt. Remember God has never failed. So why not trust him and say. You will be sorry you worry at all. Tomorrow morning. Hang it there. Give me the scripture. Having food and raiment. Let us there with be content. Let's be content. Once you have food to eat and clothes to wear, be happy. Be happy. Take it one day at a time. Amen. Give me the next verse. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith. And what is the next thing? They have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after what? Righteousness and godliness and faith and love and patience and meekness. That's what our focus should be. That's what our focus should be. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereon to thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Verse 19. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come. That they may lay hold on eternal life. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to their trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings. An opposition of science falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace with thee. Amen. So the doctrine of Balaam is a materialistic gospel. It's the gospel of Mammon. The doctrine of Balaam is all about money, money, money. So a seed for the next level. Which level? Which level? I am seated in the highest place. Seated with Christ. Which other one is next level? Which other one is next level? Just tickling your fancy. Making a fool out of you. Which level is next level? Somebody didn't go to school. He didn't sharpen his skills. And he goes for a high technology job. And he says, as I give money, that will be employed. Employed to do what? To cause commotion in the system. Even if a miracle gives you the job, how will you sustain it? You lack the skill to operate it. You need skill to operate certain jobs. So instead of giving money, use it for school fees. Go and acquire a skill. Get a good job. Make money and support the work of God better. Stand up, let's close.